What's good, friends and family? Mr. Flip Flop here with another story time. Now, on one of my Sunday services, I told you guys the prequel to this story on how this actually happened and why I actually went to see the witch on the river. If you don't remember, I'll break it down. But first, I'm going to need you to attack that like button right now. Like, share, subscribe, support the channel. Appreciate all of y'all. And let's get into the story. So as I told you guys before, and you probably don't remember, like, a, like that little sticker says, does anybody watch my videos? Anyway, so when I was about 16, 17, you guys know I'm from South Jamaica, Queens. I have no problem speaking on my past. I was, you know, I was outside before... Being people saying outside was cool, I was really outside. Um, so I had a friend named Corey. Corey was like really one of my best friends. Corey was really deep into the street. I was with him pretty much all the time. Out of nowhere, Corey ups and changes his life. He still never gave us an explanation why, but when I say Corey was big time and his family was big time, it was weird that one day Corey just changed. He said, no more streets, no more drama, I'm changing my life, F my family, F all this, I'm focusing. With that, he tried to get us to change. Corey would always tell me, man, G, these streets don't love you, F that, F this, you gotta change. And I'd be like, man, shut up, go get me a 40. He's still my friend, but he's not doing the F, F boy ish no more. So, one day Corey says, listen. You trust me, come with me. I said, cool. He said, you in a lot of drama right now. Let's just go. I want you to go talk to somebody. I said, no problem. You know, Corey, my boy, whatever he says, he's like my big brother too. So whatever he says, I'm listening. We go to Left Rack City, uh, go in this apartment. This is Puerto Rican dude. So there's a room. So Corey says, go in the room with the Puerto Rican dude. He's going to read you. I'm like, read me? What the hell is all that stuff? I don't believe in all that stuff. And I've had instances in throughout my life where people told me certain things and I was just like, what up? Being a knucklehead kid from Southside, you don't listen to a lot of that stuff. So when they would be going in this room and the dude grabs my hand, he says he's speaking in tongues, speaking some mumbo jumbo. I can laugh at it now. And he says, you carry your father's watch with you all the time. He's right here with you, watching over you. I was like, what? Huh? How did no one knew I carried my father's gold watch in my pocket? After he died, I would always have that watch on me at all times. Just sudden, it felt like a good luck charm. It's like I, I didn't like wearing uh, jewelry a lot. You know, I wasn't a big flashy dude, even though I was outside. I just wasn't flashy, and so I always kept this watch in my pocket. Well, he knew. The guy knew. He said, "Your grandfather, and your father, watching over you. You got his gold watch in your pocket, but you need to focus because you're going to get into a lot of trouble." And a lot of you not. Thinking about it later on down the line, I was when I walked out the door, I was like, yeah, whatever, mumbo jumbo, whatever, whatever, whatever. Corey, go get me a 40. And later on down the line, everything this dude said happened. Everything he told me in that room actually happened to me. And I actually sat for 48 hours one day thinking about every single word he, go, he gave me. And I was like, holy ish, this dude told me this four or five years ago that this was going to happen to me and it happened well you know that stuff is like a crap shoot like miss cleo so i really was just like thinking about it but i was like man he could have just been throwing stuff in the air and it just so happened these things happen so long story short with that that's the reason when i tell you this next part of the story of why i went to the river now if you didn't hit that like button hit that like button Make sure you're subscribed and hit that notification bell. Now let's get into the second part of the story, but stay tuned for a quick Halloween commercial from my girl Zara from Flip Fly Sports Bar as she explains the festivities for Halloween. 
Also, we added two uh, festivities, which since we're talking about the river, might as well do a party on the river, right? And also, since we're in the horror story spirit, I decided to throw a Halloween commercial in the middle of this video. Stay tuned. Welcome to Flick Club. Hey guys, are you ready for the Fatal's Life Halloween weekend? Thursday the 28th, meet and greet at Flick Club. <laughs> Friday 29th, Jack Party, aka Bottom of the Bowl. Saturday on the 30th, the official mansion pool party at the Paradise Life Mansion. Sunday the 31st, Paradise Life Excursion and party at the river. Don't forget, we only have four rooms available at the Paradise Life Mansion. We have multiple packages, so email the link below. All right, so hopefully all you guys are ready for Paradise Life 2021 Halloween weekend. We're gonna have a lot of events as Zara explained, and that party on the river is gonna be really dope. So, told you the prequel of why this situation even happened. So now, let's fast forward many years. I wanna say this story takes place about eight years ago, or seven years ago. If you watch my uh, horror story, I had an issue with the owner of a bar that I had. He tried to get me locked up. Welcome to Blifo. <laughs> now, after that situation of him trying to get me locked up, I was no longer at that business where I had that bar. The bar that I built for a friend of mine was getting close to shutting down because he wasn't keeping it up. I was kind of just mingling around, really wasn't doing much, maybe a couple of parties or such. I was down here, not really, I was kind of chilling. I had no real direction. But I ran into a lot of bad luck. Now, I'm a type of person where I'm always positive. You guys know I'm always, for every negative, there's two positive. That's what I, that's my mindset, that's how I think. So there's just a, a period of time where everything was just going bad. And I'm like, it's impossible. I'm so positive, it's impossible for everything to go bad. So a girl I'm dealing with at the time, I'm at her mother's house. And her dogs will not, she has dogs, geese, turkeys, uh, all types of animals, cats, like the house, back of the house is filled with animals, it's her pets. And the dogs are going crazy one day when I'm in the house, and they're going nuts. And so the mother's like, you know, you're a great guy, but these dogs fit, feel something about you. Now, this situation happened to me years ago, that's another story. I was like, I don't know what you want me to do, Ma, like, I don't know. So she talks to her daughter and tells her, hey, you should take him to go see the person out to Myra. Altamira is a small mountain town on the way to Santiago. So my girl put, take, comes to the crib, pulls me to the side. She goes, listen, my mother thinks you should go see the Bruja, which is the witch, on the river. I said, man, get out of here, man. Get out of here. She said, because one thing she knows about you is you're a very positive person, and you have all this negative energy around you right now. And even she can't figure it out after knowing you for so long. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. But then an incident happens one night where, where it seems like someone's over me. You know, it, it's weird. It's like someone over me. So I said, you know what? Let's go. Up. Let's go. Let's go do that. It ends up being one of my old security guards. He's like, hey, meet me over here. I live in Altamira. I'll take you guys there. Now, the way the situation works is this. You get to Altamira and there's a specific moto concho that takes you to the part of the river. Like It has to be this one of these guys takes you to a part of the river now when you get to this part of the river you have a long walk a long impasse i'm really just bugging like it's it's my girl and the moto control that used to be my security guard walking me through this this path now we get to the path it ends at the river i'm like okay what do we what do i do now there's a there's literally a river right here there's nowhere else to go he tells us i can't go any further you guys got to cross the river. I'm like, cross the river? He go, this is the lowest point, but you got to cross at some point. Down there, you could swim through, but I, th I don't think you want to get soaked. I'm like, what? He's like, that's the only way over there to the Bruja is crossing the river. I'm ready to leave. But I said, you know what? I came this far, might as well go. 
Pull my pants up a little bit. The, the water's about knee deep. I'm soaked. Walk through the river. Get to the other side. Got another path to walk through. Get to this path. And now, as you get to the path, it opens up. There's a hut over here, a shack over here, some horses, some cows. And there's like an outside waiting area where there's already people there. The, the Bruja, the witch, has a waiting area. I mean, there's like 15 people there already. So now I'm sitting there like, this is really, really weird. But hey, I'm here. Uh, we get called in. She said, my girl says, listen, he's not going to understand a lot of what you're saying. Now, it's just something called, she has like, a, the way they explained it to me, old world Spanish, whatever that is. And, and really, I understood half of what she said. It was like really strange Spanish to me. Even, even my girl at the time, some of the words she couldn't make out, but she had to ask her again. So she sat in there with me. It's this older lady smoking a cigar, like biting on a cigar, blowing to the air. Statues all around the room, candles lit everywhere. So she grabs my hand and she's talking. And she's asking questions. She goes, have you cleaned your house? Have you looked around your room? I said, I'm always in clean, I'm cleaning up. I've always looked in my room. There's nothing in my room. She goes, I'm going to give you a couple of things. You need to thoroughly clean your house and thoroughly clean your body. Someone has put something on you. You literally have an aura because you've hurt somebody. I'm like, what the hell? So she says, you got to go bathe with this first, then clean your house and watch what happens. All right. Walk back through the river. Now, I got to come see her for, for a follow-up. You know what I'm saying? Walk back through. She said, come back in like five days. Walk back through the river. Go back down. I actually had to stop at a bar and get a drink because I couldn't believe what just happened. It was a lot more details that, that's in there, but it was, it was kind of weird. So I'm trying to keep the story as short as possible. Get back to my house. There's actually places you can go to buy these things that, that, that um, the Bruja recommends. There's herbal stores and all. They actually have the things she told me to get. So now I get these things, bathe in all the stuff she told me to bathe in, wash it off, bathe again, air dry. And I'm really sticky because this stuff is weird. Then I have to clean the house, mainly my room. My girl can't even walk in the room. So now as I have all the stuff on me, I go to clean my room. Now I clean, I'm a, I'm a clean freak, I'm a neat freak. If you guys ever see me, you see I'm always cleaning up. As I'm cleaning, the place, the space, place and space I clean all the time, I'm noticing things around my room that were never there. There's a bowl on the floor with some oil in it, two cigars, one half lit by my sofa, by my head of my bed, is some garlic, um, a candle. I'm like, this stuff was never here. This is impossible. So I go to my girl. I go, you put this here when I was in the bathroom. She goes, Greg, I can't enter the room. She told me to go in the room or I'm going to have a problem. She said, it starts with your room. I'm like, but this stuff was not here. I literally picked up five items from around my room that were never there. Sounds crazy, but I'm telling you, true. Let me take a sip from my red cup so you understand how crazy as I'm telling the story this really is. Now, I finished cleaning the room. I'm frustrated, kind of angry because I'm like, who would put these things in my room? Who would wish something bad on me? I realized the only other person that had been in my room, even after we broke up, was my ex. Once in a while, she would come by and clean. She would offer. She would come do my laundry. Even though we didn't mess around anymore, she would just come and clean the house and do my laundry. And her mother was about those arts that brew her ears. She, her mother was into that. I remember me and her mother had a long conversation, and she told me some stuff about that. And I was just like, okay, you know, her mother was really cool. I'm sitting there thinking, nah, there's no way she could have did it. No way in the world. But where did this stuff come from? Well, go back for the follow-up. Now, one thing I will say, that night I slept and it felt like a weight was off my chest. It really felt different. It was just weird. I'm not trying to convince you about all this stuff. I'm just telling you my story being transparent. 
go back for the follow-up. Once again, pull up to Altamira, take a moto up the mountain, get led off to the path, go through the path, got to go across the river at, at its lowest point, cross over to the river, go to the waiting room. At this time, there's only about five people there. I get called in. She goes, you're still not out the woods yet, but you're doing much better. You found stuff in your room, didn't you? I said, yes, I did. She said, someone that you hurt decided to put something on you to affect you in a negative way. She asked me, what did you do to this girl? She immediately knew it was a girl. When I thought about it, the only other person that had been in my room was my ex. And yes, I was messing around on her. She caught me and she was highly upset about it. Like really, really hurt about it. But I thought we got past it, it was no big deal. But I guess she came later and decided she was gonna hurt me and have all these negative things happen to me to get back at me for hurting her. Later I did approach her about it. She didn't deny it, but she didn't confess. She was more like, leave me alone, don't worry about it. Went back, Brew Herrera told me, do a couple more things and you'll be out the clear, don't worry about it. If you have any more issues, come see me, but you should be good to go. Blew some smoke in my face, said a couple words, I left. Get back to the house, I lie to you not. Me being paranoid all the time, I said, hey, I'm going to look in my room. I'm just going to clean up again. I go in one of my, my drawers, which is actually my sock drawer, and there's a candle in there. Now I'm losing it because my girl hadn't been in my house in a couple days. I get socks out the sock drawer every day, so I know no one's been in there. Well, one of my roommates, I, at that time I was living in a house in Porta Plata, I had two roommates, we had a big old house. Actually one roommate, the other roommate only came once, once every six months. I said, hey, was anybody here? He goes, yeah, X came to drop some clothes off. I just let her go upstairs, she came right back down. I didn't tell him what was going on because really I was keeping it private. And I, I thought it'd be weird me telling this story anyway. So I said, dude, don't ever let her in this crib again. I don't rock with her no more. Matter of fact, I won't even let her wash my clothes anymore. And those particular clothes that she had just washed, I took them and had them washed again. Get rid of this candle. Now, literally, things start flowing into progression, which actually lead to me having flip-flop. So... For you guys that are superstition, I'm a little bit superstitious, kind of. Um, I don't believe too much in luck, but I know luck exists. I believe in energy, positive energy. I believe in God, because you got to believe in something. Um, that's my story about the witch in the river, at the river, excuse me. And believe it or not, that damn period and what I went through previously when I was younger, going to see that person, is what led me to see the witch on the river which led me to realize someone was trying to do things to me in a negative fashion. I got rid of it. Things got much better. And now we're here. So stay tuned for more. Hopefully I'll see you guys on Halloween. Hopefully you enjoyed this story as I enjoyed telling it to you. More stories to come. As you know, I got many stories. I've lived an amazing and sometimes weird life, but stay tuned for more. Mr. Flip Flop and I'm out.